Good afternoon. Good afternoon, you and the Myung Sub and Gyeon. Hey, did you guys finish the the violence prevention prevention thing training? If you already did, that's fine. When you didn't, if you didn't, please finish the training. It's a conversation. Yeah. Can yeah. you submit your screenshot about the violence prevention? Yeah, violation pre violation prevention training. Yeah. Today is the due. Professor, we need to send the email of the screenshot, right? Um, yeah, but uh, as long as you finished, then that's fine. <laughs> no, uh, I just uh, want to confirm. I mean, the score, I asked you guys to send uh, the screenshot of the completed, uh, completed training, but um, it's fine. As far as you guys uh, finished it, don't have to send it because uh, it's on you, not on me. <laughs> okay. So it's, it's a conversary for the students, not for me. So, and today's the due, and uh, it'll be it'll be good for you guys to finish uh, the training today by today. Not good for me. Okay, as you guys know. Hello, Yana, you look very smart. What do you mean, good afternoon? I mean, the hat. <laughs> really? I thought it's just fashion. <laughs> yeah, Thank really you. Very... Okay, I so, sorry, I, I forgot um, about my previous words. So I, Supposed to have uh, two lectures for the midterm, right? So today we are gonna uh, have some review for the midterm. So next lecture we will also the session for the uh, midterm. Mm -hmm. Um, but as I said, the middle term is five, 10 questions, the five metaphors, five short answers. Um, so if you guys, you, you guys wanna use the uh, computer, right? So I'm wondering if it is uh, good to, ask you guys to use the Excel sheet. Um, but I think it's necessary. It's good for you guys to use that Excel. So it should be no problem with you, you, with you guys using the Excel during the exam, right? If that is the case, then I will make one or two questions to for you guys to need to use the Excel to serve. Uh, but as, as I told you, uh, I'm gonna more focus on the understanding of concept rather than the calculation of uh, some uh, specific numbers. The reason is that at the end of the day, if you have the Excel or financial calculator and uh, have the good understanding of the concept, that's all. 
So, so as far as you guys have, we couldn't stand on concept. It's just a matter of how you guys get used to using the Excel or financial calculator yeah, to get some numbers. But um, it's not that really important to uh, get some numbers such as the years or uh, future uh, time value of money, right? At the end of the day, it, 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 the what matters is the understanding of the, the whole concept. Okay. Um, uh, first of all, Yeo uh, Gyeong uh, Sim, um, I forgot the last time to uh, copy your email from the chatting box. So uh, please let me know. <laughs> your email address, because uh, I don't have your email address. So next week, we're going to have an exam. So uh, do, you, do you know my email address, uh, Yeo Gyeong? So please send me an email, OK, Yeo Gyeong? So that, yeah. You want to receive my, uh, you want to receive the, my email? Okay, Yogyong, please send me email, okay? Okay, sure. Okay, um, I took out some articles, uh, mainly related to the, the bonds. I want you guys to read these articles and try to understand what these articles are talking about based on your understanding on the bond. I think it is not very difficult for you guys to understand these articles, okay? Um, I'm also thinking of uh, making some questions out of uh, these articles or some other articles to test your understanding on the on how the bonds uh, uh, work in terms of uh, the relationship between price and uh, interest rates or, or some other factors that may affect interest rates. For example, uh, treasury yields rise after jobs data. US government bond yields rose Friday after fresh labor market data for September showed the little sign of a serious economic slowdown. The Labor Department latest report, report showed the unemployment rate dropping to 3.5% in the last month, failing to match the lowest level it has hit in decades. It was a reversal after August that has seen joblessness thick high, thick jobless tick higher. Traders read, read the new data as a warning that the Federal Reserve has little leeway yet to back away from its plan to keep raising interest rates as it aimed to cool the economy to control inflation. Bonds prices dropped, pushing up years, which move inversely. So the jobs data actually shows that unemployment rate has dropped, so which means that people want to have more income. There will are, there are be more people who make money rather than people who do not, right? Then under the current situation, the inflation problem will not loosen, right? So then the Federal Bank, Federal Reserve is going to keep raising interest rates, right? So that is the concern for the bond investors. So if you expect the interest rate to increase in the future, what is, what is gonna to happen to the price of the bond? Yeah, definitely the price of bond will go down, right? So with the expectation, you wanna sell the bonds you're holding right now. So if you sell the bonds now, if you sell the bonds, then the bonds prices will go down which means that 
is will go up, right? Because the relationship between bonds price and yields is the opposite, right? Is in the reverse uh, inverse relationship. Okay. So at the end of the day, after understanding the bonds uh, and its relationship uh, between price and uh, uh, interest rate, you should be able to read and understand uh, uh, articles like this. The similar ones, okay. So the bond price is affected uh, by many factors. Basically, whole so the bond price is, is just kind of a reflection of what's going on in the world, okay. Hmm. Everything could affect uh, the whole economy from the small from small to uh, big things. Okay, so to refresh, uh, the, the, I, I think the, the bonds and the stocks, if you uh, have a good understanding of the bonds and the stocks and its valuations, then I think you also have a good understanding of the time value money, right? Because if you don't understand the time value money, then it would be really hard to understand or make some, make some valuation of the bonds price. Okay, um, to refresh your understanding, I'm going to repeat some um, questions we already dealt with and uh, take on some new questions from a textbook. Okay, so one of the students um, asked me to review this question again. So you have 20 South, this is from Time Value Money. Uh, topic, uh, time value money topic. The calculating future values. You have $2,000. $20,000 you want to invest for the next 40 years. Okay. You have $20,000 and you want to invest for the next 40 years. You are offered an investment plan that will pay you 6% per year for the next 20 years and the 10% per year for the last 20 years, okay? 6% and the 10%, 20 years, 20 years. How much will you, will you have at the end of the 40 years? Does it matter if the investment plan pays you 10%? Ten percent per year for the first first twenty years, and six percent for the next twenty years. As for the first question, right? How much will you have at the end of the forty years? This is just the question of uh, calculating future value of this twenty thousand dollars compounded at the rate of. Uh, 6% uh, for the first 20 years and 10% and for, for the next 20 years, right? So, uh, so right now we have $20,000, right? So annual interest rate, compounding rate is going to be 6% 6 and 20 years, right? So then future value is going to be Right, one plus 0 0.06 and 20 times. Then you wanna have this amount, okay? And uh, another 20 years, we wanna have 10% compounding interest rate, right? So then the final amount to have the four, in 40 years, we wanna have this amount. Uh, in the second question, well, in the first, uh, 20 years, you want to apply 10% rather than 6%. And the last 20 years, you want to apply 6% rather than 10%. But well, the result is the same. Okay. So from this result, you can see that, oh, 
as far as do you have the same maturity, right? Same maturity, 40 years, right? And uh, uh, as far as, and uh, the same interest rate applied to the, uh, applied uh, during the same period, uh, 60% 20 years, 60% 20 years, 10% 20 years, 10% 20 years, okay? Which come first uh, doesn't matter. It's like uh, a multiplication, 4.6 by 10, 60, right? Or 10 by 6, 60, same, right? Let's say 20,000, we will multiply again, right? Because th these numbers based on multiplication, right? Multiplication. So that's why whether we have a first 20 years, 60% or next 20 is 10% or first 10 years, 20 years, and first 20 years, we have 10% of the last 20 years, we have a six, doesn't matter, okay? But what, but the thing is that the principal amount should be same and the uh, period, uh, period of, uh, the period during which the interest rate is applied should be the same, right? If that is the case, then which interest rate comes first doesn't matter. The result is the same when it comes to future value of the your investment. You get it? Professor? Yeah. Here we have annual percentage rate, uh -huh. and we also had effective annual rate. Can you explain the difference? And your percentage rate and effective uh, annual rate? Yes. Okay, so that's the next one. So no question from about this question? Okay. It's okay. So first of all, uh, we tackle on this, tackle this question. Okay, future value, let's say, um, let's say annual percentage rate is 14%, 3%, okay? And we're gonna invest uh, at this, uh, we're gonna invest uh, $1, uh, one, two, three, four, right? So over this period, right, annual rate, annual percentage rate is 14.3%, which means that uh, during, during one year, this percentage and second year, same 14%, right? But when, when it comes to uh, future value, right? The future value with $1, when we calculate the future value of $1, we compounded this rate, right? So, Four years, what is the future valuable amount, future valuable one dollar in four years? One dollar multiplied by 14 plus one, right? This is the uh, four times. This is the future valuable one dollar, right? In four years. Okay. Compounded, compounded, right? Compounded means the interest on interest. We calculate the interest on interest. But this, this is the future value. So basically future value is also, this is called the future value vector, okay? Future value vector, this is called the future value vector. This is basically effective rate over this period, right? Effective interest rate. If you if you like this, so effective interest rate over over the over this four period is uh, fourteen point three percent plus one four times minus one. 
So this is going to be effective interest rate over this over this period, right? Why do we uh, deduct the one? This is a, a principal amount, okay? So likewise, if if, uh, if within this one one year, if the interest uh, interest is paid semi annually, right? We should also compound this interest, right? Like this, eight times. So over one year, we, we, we like the annual interest rate, right? We like to uh, have an annual interest rate, which is much more insightful, which is quite straightforward, right? Because we usually, uh, uh, like to have unit over one year. So over one year, if this rate, in, uh, if, if we have two times interest, right? This one should be also, uh, and, and as long as this, uh, int, uh, we have still a compounding interest method, we still use a compounding interest method. This one should be also compounded, right? Likewise, what is the future value of one dollar after in one year? This is just a small contracted version of this whole period. You know what I mean? This is uh, the effect future value factor. This one, right? It just uh, it's, this is also effective array, but over four years, right? Um, effective annual rate is just uh, we divide we divide one year into several period. Just to imagine that this four year is just one year, and this one to three four is just a quarter. Right? So then what's the difference? The same. As we calculated the future value of $1 in four years, if we change the uh, one year, two years, three year, four years, we should change the one year into quarter, one, one first quarter, second quarter, fourth quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, and it becomes one year, then what is the effective rate over this one year when the interest is paid quarterly. We should, we should calculate like this. We should compound this uh, over this period, the uh, in, compound interest over, uh, over this period four times. So what is the interest uh, over one quarter when the annual percentage rate is 14.3%? We should divide four, right? So then four times and minus one, then this is gonna be effective annual rate. It's just a compressed, or the compression of a four year future value into one year. You know, compounded interest method. You get it? Yeah, like you mean, if we divide <laughs> the APR by the number of periods, we get EAR. Yeah. Right? I mean, you guys know that how to calculate the future value, but when we usually say uh, future value, we use a uh, Years, right? Future value of in two years or three years, four four years, right? So we we use a uh, one plus annual rate. We use the annual rate, right? Annual rate point point three percent. And two time two years, uh, future value in two years, we multiply two times, right? Or three years, three times. But we just uh, but when it comes to uh, but when it comes to the um, 
uh, if the if we like to calculate a future value within one year when the interest is paid quarterly then we should also the quarterly interest we should also compound it quarterly interest payment to get the future value or, or future value of one uh, future value of um for example one dollar right now so what is the formula for the se uh, second bank that have uh, semi-annual compounding semi-annual Yes, the future value of one dollar if we deposit into this bank. Yeah, this is one one fourteen point three percent. First national, first United uh, compound semi annually, monthly, semi annually, right? So monthly compounded means that within one year, every month, every month they want to pay interest. So what is going to what is going to be interest pay interest payment? 14.3% divided by 12%, 12. This is gonna be a monthly interest rate. And this is gonna be multiplied 12, 12 times. One, two, three, four, six, six, right? From January to December. So then the month, uh, the effective rate of uh, the first national bank is gonna be 12.3%. Point three percent divided by twelve plus one twelve times minus one. It's gonna be effective in. Uh, I got lost. Which value do we need to use to calculate future value? EAR or APR? Uh, this is the way we calculate the effective annual rate, right? So this one should be annual percentage rate. So we divide the annual percentage rate by 12 when, when the when when you when the interest is when interest is compounded monthly. If compounded semi-annually, semi-annually, then you divide it two. Divide uh, you divide the interest annual interest rate by two. So then two times. Minus one is effective annual rate. Okay, and in the, our formula with future value, which percentage do we put? Yeah, so here, okay. Effective annual rate is one plus annual percentage percentage rate divided by number of times of interest payment. The twelve monthly payments means twelve times of interest payment, right? Same annually means two two times uh, two times the monthly uh, interest payments. For example, this is a monthly interest payments. You divide 12 times, and then you multiply 12 times, then minus one. This is gonna be effective annual rate. You divide the annual percentage rate by 12 times in case of a monthly compounding. In case of seven annual compounding, you divide 7.7% 7 .7 by uh, two times. In case of seven years, and then you compound two times. It's just uh, uh, the way of uh, uh, calculating future value. Um, within one year, when you have uh, several interest payments. Okay. You, you guys get it? Yeah, that this is future value. This one. 
So to calculate like the deposit, uh, we like we take one dollar multiply by one plus. Uh, so this is fourteen point seven. Annual percentage rate. No, the question is uh, what is gonna be annual annual effective rate effective annual rate. This is annual. Okay. The future value. So this is a future value over one year. Okay. So if you simply future value, then it could be the future value of two years, three or four years. So effective annual rate. I still have to follow. Can we just uh, solve this question like, till the end and we get understand okay. if okay. we just solve the question? Okay, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So, Professor, regarding the previous question, what's uh -huh. the final answer for it? Final answer. So we should go for a seven for a fourteen point seven percent, right? Well, I think uh, if you calculate. And if you can, the difference between this rate and this is pretty small, right? 0.4%, right? But National Bank, uh, uh, the offer is monthly compounding, right? So I think I, I didn't calculate the, uh, the, the interest annual effect rate, effect annual rate, but I think this one may be more, this, this one is higher than this one. So then as a, so as a borrower, I'm not going to uh, the National Bank, but first the United Bank because you want to pay less interest. So in this problem, we can can we understand that APR for the National Bank equals fourteen point three, and APR of the United Bank equals fourteen point seven. This is the annual uh, percentage rate. Yeah. So, so it's APR, right? Yeah, APR. So, so effective annual rate is uh, like yeah, like this. So usually, when you have the note, so when you if you go to bank and uh, they gonna offer uh, when you borrow money from the bank, then they wanna suggest some uh, they wanna uh, offer some interest rate, right? Lending rate. So then the lending rate is not effective interest rate. It's just the annual interest rate. Okay, or oh, even if you when, when you, oh, okay, when you make a deposit with the bank and then they're they gonna uh, offer some deposit rate, right? Which is not um, effective rate, which is just uh, annual percentage rate. Mm -hmm. But in this question, they are asking what, which bank would I go if I ask for a new loan? So I should go for the lower EAR, right? Correct? Sure, because you are borrowed. So, yeah, so that means the first national bank, correct? I didn't calculate, but monthly compounding may have a high, I mean, annual percentage rate looks uh, lower for this national bank, right? But effective rate would not be the same as in annual percentage rate. Different. Because I calculate the APR, but I don't know what is the period for it, like how many years is gonna be. No, 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 it's just one year. It's just one year. We are talking about effective annual rate, annual percentage rate. So okay, wait. within one year, we have 
in the first national bank, uh, we yeah, have okay. twelve times for each month. The rate is a monthly annual month monthly percentage rate. Okay, in this in this time, monthly percentage rate is fourteen point three percent divided by twelve. That is oh, okay, monthly rate. So that we okay. have to multiply twelve times and minus one. I was confused because yeah. I wrote down the formula as number of periods. So I was thinking that is the total span of the loan, but it's actually just the number of compounds. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah. So for EAR for the first United Bank, that would be two, right? Because it's semi sem semi annual. So it's two. Yeah, I think so. So even though it looks the in terms of annual percentage rate, it looks higher. If you actually it, because this is compounding, mostly compounding or which is the same year compounding, you're gonna uh, see the difference. Uh, you're gonna see the power of a compounding. Okay. okay. Yes. So I, I I think that first the United Bank may charge less interest rate in terms of effectively charge less than the uh, national first national bank even if they have uh, they have a higher annual percentage rate um okay i i, I think you guys may have a, a uh, difficulty understanding the difference between effective annual rate and the annual percentage rate but uh, effective annual rate is just uh, uh, it's just uh, another form of uh, future uh, another way of calculating future future value within one year okay within one year but the only difference is that we are talking about monthly or quarterly or semi annually okay that, that, that that's the only difference if you look at if you look at the, the, the formula of calculating effective annual rate and and uh, and compare it with the future value, the formula of calculating future, there's no difference. Just the, the unit of time is different. Annual or monthly or semi-annual, that's the difference within one specific period. Okay. I think it over. I, I, I it is, this is pretty. Um, yeah. Wow. I, I, I tried to. I, I'm gonna send you guys um, uh, another uh, additional slides of explaining uh, the difference between effective annual rate and annual percentage rate because that is going to be uh, better for you guys to think it over. Yeah. Okay. Uh, interesting, interpreting bond yields. Is the yield to maturity on a bond the same thing as the required return? Is the yield to maturity the same thing as the coupon rate? Suppose today a 10% coupon bond sells at par, Two years from now, the required return on the same bond is 8%. What is the coupon rate on the bond now? The yield maturity. Okay, so we did this question last time, but maybe uh, you still have some questions uh, on this problem. So is Can the you give yield us some time to think before you solve it, like two minutes. Sorry? Can you give us some time to think about the question before you solve it, like two minutes? Oh, okay, okay. Please go ahead.
Then the first one, yield maturity. the same as uh, required return. Same or different? Can I try? Yeah. Uh, as I understand, yield to maturity is the maximum of ma amount of money that you can get from the bond if you keep it until it mature. Right? Um, partially right, or partially a little bit incorrect. Um, the yield maturity, the definition of an yield maturity, um, is the uh, Uh, you you uh, you said uh, Ayana, you said a maximum, right? Uh, yeah, maximum. If you mean maximum as a total, right? Yes, okay. the expected amount of money. The, yes, the total amount of money they can get. Yeah, total return. Yeah. So bond has price, right? Has price. So you want to purchase bond in the market. Right, so you want to purchase a uh, a bond at x x amount x dollar, right? And this bond is gonna pay coupon, right? Over some period until maturity, right? So I'm sure you want to receive a principal amount let's say $100 or $1,000, let's say $1,000 is the power value of the bond. So then the yield maturity is uh, how much you wanna get from investing or purchasing a bond as specific, for specific period, price and holding the bond over the until uh, 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 until maturity of the bond, right? That so that is the yield maturity. So simply speaking, it's like you guys remember. Let's say this bond has two uh, three years, three years of maturity. Three year, uh, has three years to maturity. So then coupon payment. First year, coupon made the second year, coupon payment the third year, and the principal amount, right? And the, this is the price. And the, to should it be year one, discounted the uh, year two, discounted the year three. This discount, first year, second year, third year, this discount rate, interest rate may be different, right? Maybe different, but the yield maturity is maybe different. But yield maturity is the actually mm -hmm. one year, second year, thirty year. The interest rate is supposed to be different, but yield maturity is kind of a kind of a effective. Uh, Kind of, kind of uh, average rate, or in reality, uh, first year, second year, first thirty year, the interest rate could be different. But we try to find out one specific rate that makes it this um, one one specific rate that makes the this uh, present values some of this present values same as this current price. That is the yield maturity, right? This yield maturity is the interest rate, effective interest rate or interest rate that makes the present, the sum of the present values of cash flows 
same as uh, current price. So if you have the bond price, if you have if you have a price of a bond, right? If, if, if the bond price is set, determined, then you can calculate the yield maturity based on the, the, the maturity period, the, the, uh, the bond maturity and the coupon rate. But in reality, if you actually um, look, in, look at the, uh, the interest rate in the market, every, uh, the, depending on which year you are uh, looking at, the interest rate of each year is different. So this R1, R2, R3 is supposedly different, but just ignoring uh, uh, the ignoring the difference of uh, interest rate of different interest rate of, of, of each period, you simply it, it just it, you, you can calculate this yield maturity using uh, as far as you know the price and the cash flows coupon payments. The, the why we use this uh, then you're gonna ask uh, why do we have to calculate this yield maturity or simply yield? Why? Because the the bond, right? Bond price. Uh, goes down when yield maturity high and bond price goes up when yield maturity lower. So yield maturity kind of reflects the bond market. So when yield maturity high, the yield are high, right? So then the bond investors are concerned about the future. They're concerned about so the so like yield maturity, it is discounted amount of the money that we get if we invest into the bond. Like if uh, if the bond matures in four years, uh, we calculate the um, future, like the future value that can we get if we discount it back, it is yield to maturity. Yeah. Um, um... No, no, no. Uh, the yield maturity, yield maturity is, um, as I said, yield maturity is the the rate that makes the makes the makes the present value of uh, cash flows over the period of the bond the same as uh, the current price of the bond, right? And uh, yeah, it, 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 so. Yeah, um, if, if you discount the, uh, the these cash flows using this yield maturity, then you're gonna have, and some of this uh, present value, you're gonna have uh, uh, the amount the same, the same as, which is same as the price, right? You're, you're right. When it comes to, when, it, uh, when you're right in terms of in, it, you you can yeah the pre the yield maturity is the discount rate right discount rate for the future of cash flow but what I'm trying to say is that um, the yield yield maturity the purpose we the purpose we calculate and get uh, yield maturity is to as an investor, right? If the yield maturity is high, then price goes down, and if the maturity goes down, prices goes up, right? So then, in the bond market, they read the market using these changes in the yield. That's why we are trying to get these yields. So uh, please do not simply, um, 
theoretically is okay, uh, where it maturity could be the discount rate, uh, could it be, yeah, could it be discount rate? Um, but we need to take, uh, need to make uh, one step further, okay? We need to make one step further, not just the discount rate as a, it's a mature as discount rate, but as a, uh, as a, as a, uh, you should understand it to mature as the relationship between uh, relationship with the changes in price of a bond. Okay. So, um, so is the yield maturity uh, uh, on a bond the same thing as required return? What's the answer? What is required return? Required return is the return as an investor, bond investor, the return you require, you expect. So we require, then, we expect, or it is the minimum that we can accept uh, for investing. Sorry? Like required return is the minimum amount of money that we can get from investing that, uh, un, uh, 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 receiving which we agree to invest. Yeah. So recovery return is, a, is, is, is recovery is basically market returns. So you want a uh, higher return uh, for uh, lower risk, right? That's correct. So you want to have a maximum uh, return uh, with, with a, a minimum uh, risk, uh, that's correct. Yeah, that that that's, that that also uh, that uh, mentality also works in the bond market. So if the inflation risk is high, like here, inflation high, then you're gonna expect higher interest, higher return to compensate, make up for the inflation. Right? So coupon, let's say coupon um, payment, the coupon rate is just 8%, but you expect uh, additional 2% of inflation rate, then you would expect uh, um, you wanna, your recovery return would be, would wanna be 10%, right? So if the maturity, so if, if, if the recovery return is getting higher, then you're gonna expect you want to so require a higher return. Require return means that you expect a higher return from the investment in the bond, right? Then the higher return means that when you purchase the bond, when the purchase pricing of the bond should be lower because the coupon rate is fixed. There's no way you can change it. There's, no, there's, a, there's only one you can change in the bond which is bond price, purchase price, because coupon rate is fixed, maturity period is fixed, right? What's the way? So when you, when you expect a higher return, the only thing you can change is the, the purchase price of bond. So when you expect a higher return, higher required return, then the, the, your expectation will be reflected into low price of the bond. Right? So low price of a higher price or low price of bond will be, so if the price is lower or higher, right? Then it maturity is basically the interest rate that makes the, the sum of the present value of the future cash flows the same as this price. So, Required return is going to be same as yield maturity. Right? Because required return is a reflect, required return is if you have a high required return, then the bond price is going to go down. And the lower price will be reflected into yield maturity. Right? Because yield maturity is the rate that makes the 
present value of the cash flows the same as the price, right? So when you expect, so do you, you expect the return, recover return, is gonna be the same as yield maturity, yield. Yield is the reflection of the required return. Yield is kind of a, yeah, it's a kind of a um, formal way of expressing required return from your bond investment. It's kind of a formal name, official name. Re official name of required return is the yield, yield maturity, okay? Yield maturity, the same thing as coupon rate? No, right? Coupon rate is the rate, interest rate that is set by the uh, bond issuer. And you, you're doing the live of bond, right? So coupon rate is different. If the coupon rate is the same as the yield maturity, then there is no change in the price, right? If the coupon rate is the same as yield maturity, then there will be no change in price. Yield maturity always change depending on the market situation. Let's say, Okay, so how we solve it? So we have 10%, then we have 8%. What formula should we use? How, how to solve this task? So this is not the calculation problem. This is just a kind of, a, you need to explain what will happen. So suppose today 10% coupon sales at par, sales at par. So let's say par amount is 1,000. So today, 10% of the coupon bond sell at par, which means that recover return or yield also 10%, right? When the coupon rate and the market rate is same, then the selling price of bond is gonna be a par, face value of the bond. Because the, because you, you you get the interest amount at the rate of a market rate, which is the same as coupon rate. But if the if the market rate, your car rate is higher than coupon rate, then the price of bond, if, if the market rate is higher than coupon rate, then the price of bond is gonna be lower than par value, right? If the market, if the market rate required return is lower than coupon rate, then the bond, the price of bond is gonna be higher than par value. So, so this premium bond, we will earn more. Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be you should have premium. Because then you can, so the next question is gonna be, yeah, easy. Pretty confusing. So at the end of the day, you, you guys understand that the relationship between, not between coupon rate and the bond price, but between market interest or yield, yield maturity and the price, okay? Relationship, not relationship between coupon and the price, okay? But between Yield, yield maturity and uh, bond price. And yield maturity is the reflection of uh, required return. So 
required rate of return, okay, required rate of return is uh, officially called yield in the bond market. In the bond market, okay. The year, the yield maturity is as as Yana said, the total return on the bond. Okay. Hey, are you crying, Yana? You you because it is 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 too difficult. Okay. Um. Yeah. Basically, bond is not easy. Uh, at first. Um. You know what? It, it, it could be much more complicated than this one. This is almost the first stage of this bond. Almost the first stage. If you're getting deeper and deeper, if you go to convexity and uh, effective uh, convex. Yeah, the convexity and um, effective duration. And um, there'll be a lot of um, strategies in the bond market to minimize interest rate risk. So if you go into that area, it's gonna be really complicated. But it's most a first stage. So, the most important thing you should remember is the relationship between bond price and uh, yield maturity, okay? Or require return in the market. So always invert, always reverse relationship. As you can, as you as you read this, as you read this article, they keep talking about inverse relationship between bond price and yield, and the article's main topic is what economic conditions has impact on the changes in the interest rate or yield. Why are they keen on that interest changes in interest rate? Because that is related directly related to the uh, bond price. So if you expect the bond price to go down, then you want to sell the bonds, okay? Or if you expect the bond price to go up, which means that if you expect the interest rate goes down in the future, then you're going to purchase the bond. That's how the bond market works. That's why we are trying to find out here. But the price is going to be set first. Then we can get the yield maturity based on the uh, price of the bond and the coupon rate and maturity, right? We do not set the yields, okay? The price is gonna be set in the market. So then based on the, uh, the price of bond and the coupon rate and the maturity, we can uh, be, uh, the yield rate is decided. So it, that's why yield maturity is almost the same as internal rate of return. In the capital budgeting. So uh, we we have several questions related to these bond years. So I think you can you guys can. I already saw this question. So. You guys can start with this question. You guys can, yeah, start with this question reporting to this, my solutions. This is, should be two times, okay? Because yield maturity in this case is the same annual, this rate is same annual, so you should divide, uh, multiply two times. Two years from now, you probably turn to eight percent. What is the coupon rate of the bond? Same, right? Not change, not change, not change. And it's much, it's much is going to be eight percent, okay? Because it's maturity and it's probably the same. 
interpreting bond is supposed to you buy a 7% coupon, 20% 20 year bond today when it's first issued. 7% coupon, 20 year bond. If interest rate suddenly rise to 15%, what happens to the value of bond? What happens to the value of bond? It will decrease because the bond percentage is lower than interest rate. Yeah. So coupon rate is 7% and uh, required return rose to 15%, almost more than two times, right? Then the value of your bond is gonna by more than half, right? Why? Inverse relationship, okay? The coupon rate, uh, big Canyon Enterprises has bonds on the market making annual payments within 12 years to maturity at par value of 1,000 and a price of 1,030. At this price, the bonds is 6.14%. Uh, what must the coupon rate, or what rate be on the bonds? So we have uh, this par value and we have this price and we have a maturity 12 years and uh, this is a uh, annual payments right so we have uh, is the maturities what is missing is the coupon rate right coupon rate is missing so we have uh, all other variables but just the coupon rate so using uh Excel payment, you can get this uh, payment of 65. So you simply divide it 65 by 10,000, far value, then you're gonna have a coupon rate, 6.5% annual payment. So just uh, double click this, um, then you can find uh, the formula, okay? Parkway Void CEO issued 15 year bonds two years ago at a coupon rate of 5.4%. The bonds make semi-annual payments. If these bonds are currently sell for 106% of a par value, what is the yield maturity? Okay. So we have, uh, let's say, uh, probably 100 and the price is 106%, so 106. So then 15 year, if 15 years to, uh, ago. So it maturity was 15 years initially, right? But two years has passed. Three years have passed. So at this month, we have only certain years remain left to the maturity, to maturity. Right? So years maturity is a certain years rather than 15 years. Okay. So using this information. The bond uh, coupon rate is 5.4, uh, okay? So using this information, you can we can get yield maturity. Then once you get yield maturity, uh, once you get it, you should divide, you should multiply two times because this is uh, yield maturity based on the, uh, uh, based on the uh, semi-annual payment. So you should uh, multiply two times, then you have, uh, yeah. Point, uh, Can you bring it back to the previous task and show the formula? Formula? Uh, For the previous task. This one? Yes. Formula? In the Excel. <laughs> Uh, 
Right. This is going to be, uh, if you really want to know the formula, this is going to be an uh, equation. So we have a power value and the price and years to maturity, right? And uh, years to maturity, right? Then what we don't know is the, what you are seeking is a, a coupon rate, right? So um, if you have this financial calculator, there's a way to calculate this coupon, coupon rate, right? But if you do not, then you can use the Excel spreadsheet for the formula and uh, payment. Let's, let's do it again. So payment, payment. The rate, rate, what should it come as a rate? 6.14. Divided by, it's a plus minute. Annual, okay, annual. If it is the same annual, then you should divide it too, okay? Yep. And uh, 12 years. 12 times, right? If it is same annual, we should multiply two times. If Or if it is quarterly, four times. If it is monthly, it's 12 times. The, what is the present value? 100. Yeah, this is present value. Let's put it to the minus. And future value. 100,000. 1,000, right? 65, right? 65 is payment, annual payment. But 65 uh, should, should be divided by this 1,000, then 6.5%. So 6.5%, the coupon rate is a bit higher than yield maturity, right? That's why we have a price which is a higher than, price higher than a par value, okay? There is no specific formula to uh, uh, yeah, to just try to use this uh, Excel shit to, to get this number. Same goes for here, right? Just using the Excel sheet, you can get this array. Okay. Nominal and real return. Nominal and real return is just the nominal and the real is just uh, the difference between nominal and real is inflation. Inflation. Okay. Nominal rate is uh, includes inflation. Real rate uh, was adjusted for inflation. So investment of total return of twelve percent over the coming years. Coming year, Alex Hamilton thinks the total real return on this investment will be only nine percent. What does Alex believe the inflation rate will be over the next year? Just the difference between nominal rate and uh, the twelve percent minus. 9%, 3% is gonna be in inflation rate. Okay. Say you own an asset that has total re return last year of 12.1%. If the inflation rate last year was 3.4%, what was the real return? So then you simply minus 3.4 real return. Right. So nominal is uh, similar principal amount, and the rear 
is the uh, principal price uh, coupon. Real is actually price of the bond, similar in terms of a concept. Because uh, when you set the price of the bond, they reflect inflation, the risks, whatever that may affect the bond, right? But nominal, they don't care. Uh, they just, uh, yeah, the coupon and principal, they are not adjusted for any inflation and uh, risk. Conceptually, right? Conceptually. Not exactly the same, but conceptually. Um, I think you can, you guys also can uh, solve this question using this, uh, pre, uh, this solution, just uh, uh, manipulate the numbers, okay? So then you can see the difference, right? So this question actually uh, asks you uh, what, um, five years. So what kind of impact of a maturity has a uh, uh, maturity has on the price, change of price, okay? The longer the maturity is, the longer the maturity is, the price of a bond is more sensitive to changes in the interest rate. And uh, yeah, that is the, the interest, interest risk means that uh, interest risk interest risk means that how much bond price change for interest rate. But what changes in price? So when interest rate changes, we are we know that oh price of bond will change as well. If interest rate increases, then price will go down. If interest rate goes down price will go up, but but how about, but what if the maturity, uh, what if uh, all, other, uh, uh, all other conditions same, but, uh, but the maturity. So if one bond has a longer maturity than the other, why they have the same coupon rate and the, what is the, their interest rate risk. What's the difference in interest rate risk? This is the, the question that, yeah, that answer, uh, yeah, that answer that the, the sensitivity of uh, a bond price when the maturity of a bond is different, okay? So we have the same coupon rate, but maturity is uh, different, five years maturity or 25 years to maturity. So when interest rate changes by 2%, rise by 2.4%, what would change, what would happen to the uh, percentage change in price, okay? The, re the conclusion is that the bond with a longer maturity has more has a higher sensitivity to change in interest rate interest rate more sensitive to interest rate more sensitive means the higher risk to interest rate the bonds with a high uh, longer maturity okay so you can you can change these years Here's the maturity, okay? Then you can see the, the changes in price. Price use this. The same goes for here. The, the almost same. Questions are almost same. Bond years, yeah. Two times, yeah. 
don't consider the growth so from here, the, the stock valuation. I think stock valuation is relatively uh, straightforward than uh, the bond valuation, right? You just need to understand the, the uh, and golden uh, golden gross model okay we are we dip it we dip it on the discount model right so uh, one of the discount model golden gross model so just try to understand the golden gross model okay the golden gross model is, is relatively simple right and p and terminal stop uh price where um this is also kind of a similar kind of a, uh, calculation of a future value, right? So what we, the, the question is the, what is the stock price? The PE is the price to earnings, right? So as you, as you, as you know, if you know the, uh, the here, what, what, what they uh, provided is the, okay. So in, in, in practice, a common way to value a share of the stock when a company pays dividends is to value dividends over the next five years or so. Then the final the terminal stock price using a benchmark P ratio. Suppose a company just paid a dividend of 1.15. The dividends are expected to grow at 10% over the next five years. The company has the payout ratio of 40% and benchmark P is, is 19. So what is the stock price in five years? So what is the stock price today, assuming a required return of 11% of the stock? So first question is same as asking the future value of this uh, stock. And the second question is uh, what is the present value of this stock, okay? So what is going to be a uh, uh, future value? Where uh, we, we should use this benchmark of uh, uh, price earnings. Price earnings, benchmark price earnings is uh, uh, 19, right? And uh, future value, if you want to know future value, then you simply price earnings multiplied by Uh, earnings in five uh, one plus annual annual earnings return annual earning as five years. Okay. So here, when dividend is grows to ten percent, which means that earnings also grow ten percent, right? When dividend at ten percent, the earnings should not earnings, yeah. There's the 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 um, growth rate of earnings should not be different from the growth rate of uh, dividend, right? So. Gross rate, earnings gross rate is 10% as well. Okay. So 19 with right, okay. Earnings, current earning. This is current earning. Okay. What is the current earning? As we take, as you remember, when you calculate the, the terminal value, we like this one current dividend plus one plus g right and divided by r minus g this is the terminal value of a star at some period then we should discount this discount rate maybe same Right, so 
So then discount rate period. Then you have a present value of this terminal value. The like of but here the question is future value of this uh, stock price, right? Target stock price means your future price. So 19 times and uh, earnings is gonna be one point multiplied by 60%, right? Because 40% was uh, uh, disputed to disputed as dividends. So 6% still remains in the company as an earnings, right? And then one plus one, 10% is, is a 1%, 0.1 and three. So it, this is the future uh, price, target stock price in five, sorry, in five years, sorry, five years, in five years. And the, the stock, uh, then the, the stock price today, so you should discount this one plus one plus 11, five times. Then this is gonna be, this is gonna be your valuation of this stock. So you compare this valuation versus the current price of this stock in the market. So if the price is lower than this valuation that you are purchasing this stock, if this price market price is higher than this valuation, then you're not going to buy this stock or sell the stock. Okay. Wait, we have a one more session for the middle term. Both, uh, one more uh, review uh, time for the midterm. So if you have questions, then uh, please ask me in the next uh, lecture. Okay. I think you guys have many questions about, so I think it'd be better to prepare with some questions before you come into the lecture, right? So please take a note of your questions and then ask me during the lecture. Then I will, yeah, I answer your questions. Please. Would you send us the solution to these problems later? Yeah, I will. Uh, there are some uh, questions that does not have a solutions specifically. So I'm gonna, yeah, add an additional slide. Yeah. Okay. So please read us, uh, these slides. And if you have any questions, then ask me. So in the next lecture, I'm trying to focus on more uh, conceptual understanding of these uh, uh, bonds and stuff rather than just uh, uh, the calculation or valuation Okay, because I think that is more important. Okay, so then you can, you guys can read the articles and understand it, what, and you can get the information, right? The, the calculating the numbers is, it, is nothing. It, it should be left to, to the computer, right? Or financial calculator. You guys know the concept and to try to understand and try to, uh, have information based on your knowledge. Okay, thank you. Uh, you some of you guys have a next class. Okay, so see you next lecture. So please come with some correct uh, uh, questions to ask. Okay. Okay, thank you. See you next uh, Tuesday. Okay. Bye bye. Thank you, thank you professor. professor. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, professor.